Hello. In this episode, will be officially known as Stupid Hard Drive Tricks, the case of the missing heads. Because this hard drive, one I've had around for a while, has had a constant problem with stiction, as in the heads sticking to the platters and you'd have to give it a little jounce to get it freed up and moving again stuff but been a long time since it'd been operated and when I tried to pull it out this time to see if it'd still fire up to see if there's anything on it something odd happened the heads broke off or come detached from the little arms two of them to be exact and so what I just got done doing, or finished doing, is taking the platters off, unstacking them, removing the two spring arms in question that had the missing heads on them, cleaning everything out. You can't really quite see it in there, but in that space, there is two missing heads and two missing arms. And this drive originally had six heads. So that means it's now only got four heads. And if it was a top head or whatever that broke off or got ripped off, and it wouldn't be much of a problem because the uh, ladder is normally logically arranged as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as you go up from there. The one closest to the case is usually always by convention head 0 and then you go up from there. So if you had one of the top heads or one of the bottom side of the top platter head break loose then you could remove it and all you'd have to do is program the BIOS setting on the computer to only use uh, four heads and in other words to tell it that it's a four head drive or a five head drive then it would never try to use the missing head but in this one here we've got slightly more difficult situation. The two missing heads are deep in the stack and the largest continuous block of heads is uh, heads 3, 4, and 5. Head 0, which is under the bottom disc, is intact. Heads 1 and 2 is missing. Heads 3, 4, and 5 is intact. So, question is how to make the three contiguous heads appear as 0, 1, and 2 on the controller. Well in this situation we're lucky on this drive because it's one of those drives that does not have any active components on the wiper arm. So, on those, they normally just bring the read-write head channels right out to the plug on the end of the ribbon cable. And normally, each set of four pins on the plug is represents run head, two top pins, read head, two bottom pins, write head. So they come in a set of four each head. And in this case, it's head 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Head 0 being the one closest to that side. Head 5 being the one closest to this side. And so, the way it looks now, we have head 0 is good. Heads 1, 2 are bad. Heads 3, 4, and 5 were good. 
this block of three heads is what we want to show up here. And little trick I learned a long while ago is that you can unplug this ribbon cable and you can't really see it in there but the plug, uh, the connector pins two layer total of 12 pins wide and how you've got to shift them over is just move the plug to the left six pins which we've got one problem here is the hard drive lead is in the road it can do one of two things cut off the end of the plug here so that there's enough room or just take and shove the hard drive lead out of the freaking way and voila one two three four five six there we go you've got it officially three four and five shifted to positions zero one and two so three contiguous good heads should show up in logical positions zero through two now I got to throw the cover back on the drive after dust uh, blowing the dust out and stuff with clean air and I'll hook all up hook up all the cables and stuff and we can get to the fun part here already uh, drive with a shifted cable is in place hooked up to power and everything hooked up to the dust motherboard now fire the sucker up and let's get to the fun part here to be coming up fast. I'll go into the bar settings and show you what you need to do. Alright, here we are in BIOS. Currently have it set at type 49 as user, user definable. 615 cylinders, 6 heads, 300 pre compensation, 615 land zone, 17 sectors track, size 30 megabytes, but since we only have three heads to work with, change it to three. And it changes total size to 15 megabytes. Alright, now put your dust disk in. Boot it up. Let's see if the sucker works. Alright, DOS is booting up off the disk. And I'll go back to old hard disk prep. Right. And, whoops, wrong one. Escape. Let's see here. Hard disk diagnostic, not hard disk prep. Uh, run hard disk diagnostic and take and to make sure the hard drive is actually properly connected to the controller we're going to do a seek test F2, drive run F1 yep you can hear the actuator grinding along And it seems to be, positioner seems to be working properly. Now comes 
the part where you uh, low level format the disk. Drive one, clear defects, and delete two. Drive one, yes. And then I'll cut this part out here so you don't have to watch it. Alright, we're approaching completion. Format complete. Escape. And defect scan. See if it actually wrote anything. And if all the heads are reporting present and accounted for. Yep. It's reading it. Um, one or two. Yeah, a few. Yeah. Read errors here and there. But considering what just happened, it's not exactly. How do I say this here? Unexpected. Alright. Escape out of that. I could technically run a surface analysis on the disk and have it flag all the tracks with defects in them but I don't want to waste that much time here so I'll escape out of that then F disk to set up the drive logical drive master boot record here is all Alright, restart. That's an A key. Alright. Boot it up. We're booting up. Now, take and see if logical C drive is there. It is, of course, invalid media type. It have format slash s c drive and let's see what it does yes 15.28 megabytes of course there's a couple of little defects there 234 and it goes on, I'll cut here. There's a couple spots here. And there, it seems to be settling now. And four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and all complete. System transport. 61 kilobytes in bad sectors. C drive directory. Happy hey drive. Nope. Get all the stuff on the drive. See if it'll boot from a hard drive. Alright. All files copied over. Directly. Our present accounted for. Now comes the moment of truth. Move floppy disk. Alt delete. Let's see if it can boot from the headless hard drive. Doop, doop, doop. Starting MS DOS. I'm in testing extended memory. And smart drive. It's good. We are booted. Directory. Try a few programs. Nice pass. It's broken. This drives. C drive. This CMOS type 49. 614 cylinders, 3 heads, 7 sectors stack. 13 megabytes free out of 15. And. Oh, wow. That's it. See here, another one, and manage it. Yep. Here we go. 
Yep. That's it, just behind it. Yep. See? It's virtually working again. The headless hard drive lives to ride another day. Of course, it's only three of its head. Six heads still intact. Shut the thing down here. There we go. And I'll fill you in a little secret here. This little TF disc on the top is something I scribbled on the disc a long time ago, several years ago. That stands for Thin Film Disc. Reason why? Because several years ago, it had damage to one or two of the platters ca caused from that stiction problem. Although the heads didn't separate from the disc uh, from the arm that time, so it was causing a large portion of corruption across the platters and quite noisy so what I done is took a couple thin film platters from a uh, hard drive that wasn't working but had good media in it and transferred them over to this drive and pulled the old Hard drive platters out, and the original ones were what uh, used the technology known as thick film coating. While the ones I put in were spattered or thin film style disc platters, and that's the reason why I scribbled the thin film disc and uh, TF disc for thin film disc, meaning I'd changed the di uh, hard drive platters in this years ago. So this isn't the first time I've worked on this hard drive and rebuild it, so this ca case, it lost quite a bit of its capacity, but it is still working. For grins and giggles, though it may be, but it is still working. Take care. Take it easy.